Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to another edition of Foundations and Magic. Um, last time we talked about the Kabbalion, we did that in two parts, and uh, you'll find that over there either either on the YouTube channel or you're going to find it you know, here on the YouTube channel or you're going to find it uh, over on the Patreon site. Um, I don't think I published it on the blog, though. I, I might have, but I, I don't think so. I am going to do, I think, a video page for Foundations and Magic, so do look for that over there at, at imsteppingaside.com. That's going to be coming here in the near future. Uh, I'll probably put all of it there as well. But for right now, um, let's go ahead and, and talk about different ways to create sigils. You can do you can use runes to do it. You can use number tables, um, planetary uh, squares. You can use those as well. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about here today. Now, the planetary squares one I've already done because they're so the 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 boxes are so small that it's just easier if I I did that without having to do it in the dark. But there's a there's a, a a basic way that you do this. You you decide on what you want the 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 sigil to to be about. And in this case, I think we're going to do one for power. Um, generally speaking, what you want to do is convert that word power, or if you're going to use a phrase, you're going to want to convert that into something that you can work with. And in this case, it's going to be numbers. And to do that, we're going to use a number table. And what that looks like is this. You can see where you've got all the letters that correspond to uh, the, the, the number one, two, three, four, and on and on. You can see that. Now, this is a traditional uh, numerical correspondence table. Down below it, I have the, the runes as well listed that correspond to each number. And we're going to use them in a, in a rune symbol. We're gonna, a rune sigil will do in a not the way I normally do it, but we'll do it that way because it is a way you can do it. You can use a, a table to do that. Um, we'll be using this one when we do that. So now, ideally, when you do something like this, you're going to do it within a ritual. Um, you're either going to cast your circle or you're going to invoke sacred space. Whatever you do to establish all of that, you're going to do what you do. I, I'm not going to really go into all of that because every witch is different. And uh, depending on, on your tradition, you may have a specific way that you establish your ritual space. Uh, and it may involve calling the quarters. It may involve, you know, uh, the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. Whatever you do to create your sacred space or, or establish your circle, do that first. And then you're going to want to, if, if you don't have time, you can have already have had these made ahead of time, you know, whichever one you're going to use, however you're going to make your sigil, you, you could have all of that ahead of time. Otherwise, the best way to do it is to craft it within the ritual. But for the purposes of today, we're going to pretend we already did all that, established our sacred space, established our circle, however we want to do that, and that we've already drawn these out, whichever one we're going to, or, or that we, we're going to draw them out. Now we're to the place where we're going to make the sigil. So we'll just imagine that we're there. Now, the very first thing you do is you're going to have to decide, again, on, on what it is you're doing, and we've decided on power. So what we're going to do is we're going to write power here we're going to start with the magic circle and do one here we're going to write it there and then we're going to go to our our number table and we're going to see how that breaks down in terms of numbers so p you can see there p and o are seven and six so let's write down seven under the p and six under the o w now w is in the five isn't it and so is e so we're going to go five and five And R there is under 9, so we're going to put a 9 there. Now, a note about this. Because we're only using five letters here in the word power, I'm not going to worry about taking out the, the, the vowels. Uh, there's different ways you can approach this. If you had a long word or a phrase or something, you would want to strike out and remove all of the dual number, dual letters. So if you had more than one P, you would take out one of them and just have one uh, that you're going to be working with. 
Um, the idea is to try to avoid the same numbers back to back, but but sometimes you can't help it. Like, like with this particular word, you can see the five and the five is just together. And we're probably just going to leave it there and not move. But what you can do is you can circle around and come back to it and make it look, you know, interesting. Uh, some of the planetary ones, you can see it right here. You see how on the, on the, on the, uh, on the sun, how they've how they've come around here. Where am I at? See how, see, see how they, they circle around? It's difficult to do this uh, <laughs> that way, but you can see how that's what they did. They circled around, and so they made it more decorative, basically. But you don't have to do that. You could just leave it where it was. And so, in any event, um, so you can do it this way and leave all of your just strike out the, the 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 dual ones, the ones that appear more than once, or you could also strike out all of the vowels as well. Um, it's kind of the hermetic way of doing it, I think, to take out the vowels as well and just reduce it down to consonants. Um, Yahweh is is written as uh, uh, they take out the a, so so there's I think Yahweh is is only four letters maybe how they do that or, or something. I, I, I've forgotten now, but, but if you look at them, you'll, you'll find there aren't any vowels there if you look at Hebrew. So in any event, we're not going to do that though today. Today, let's go ahead then and, and uh, go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll draw out our sigil here. Uh, using our let's just do the simplest one first the nine point the nine pointed square so what you're going to do these others are kind of fancy we're going to start with a box we're going to do a tic-tac-toe in the middle and that's going to create nine squares and then from there and you can do this in a circle as well it doesn't have to be as complicated as all this you know a, a tri-level one like this one is I mean, it could be in a circle as well, where you're just, you know, I don't know how you do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you you, you could do it that way, but then you're, you're going to have to have some funny lines here, because I didn't do it very well. But you can see... And you can draw your you can draw your sigil that way if you want to, but I happen to think it just doesn't look very good. So I'm going to go ahead and start over. So that one isn't there. So let's go ahead and do our, our nine boxes again. And we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, just in the order. All right. And there's your simple nine point sigil box, if you will, <laughs> magic square. All right. So if we're if we're looking at seven, six, five, five, nine, we're going to start with uh, the seven. Oh, and I'm going to I'm going to use a red pen and hopefully this will work. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to go over it with a with a Sharpie so that you can really see it. Um, so here, sometimes my pens give out. So I'm going to start with a circle on the seven. I'm going to draw a line to the six and I'll show you that. That should actually be an open circle, but it doesn't have to be. And then we're going to go over to five and just sort of stay there for two of them. <laughs> and then we're going to go to nine. And we're going to do a little half moon to terminate the end of it. And there's your sigil. What that would look like drawn out, I'll just do this, the, the actual circle instead of whatever it was I drew there. So, there's the simplest sigil for power. And you can see how we did that. Now, if you're going to do the same thing with the magic circle, here we're using letters. And so we don't need these numbers here. So we're going to go to the P. We're going to draw a circle and draw a line up to the O. And then over to W, where in the heck is that? Oh, right there, W, and then E, 
and then R. And we're going to terminate it there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use the Sharpie on that so you can see that a little bit better. So we started with P, went up to O, went to W, E, R. And so what that looks like drawn out, <clears throat> let me go up, over, Cross there and go under. There's your sigil. Now, if we want to use a rune table, and, and this is just one way to use uh, runes basically as an alphabet. I Again, I don't do it that way, and, and I'm going to actually do a bind rune here for you to show you what I do. Uh, if you've uh, been to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune, you know what that looks like. And I think the next uh, one we're going to do, I think I will uh, dive more in depth into, uh, yeah, it's this one, uh, the uh, uh, by, makings of bind runes. We'll get more into the runes and whatnot. But you can see below there, I've done a table that... Uh, Again, the simplest way to do this is just to change your font. If you don't have a, an Elder Futhark font, just go online and Google and, and get one and, and download it into your, your, uh, uh, into your computer. It's, all of your, your software is going to pick it up. And then just choose that font. And, uh, and again, you know, A, B, C, D, E, just, just start doing your alphabet and you're going to see what the corresponding uh, runes are for each letter. But you can see that that it's it's basically done in the same table, same same sort of table. Again, there's only 24 runes, so you know instead of 26 uh, letters, there's only 24 runes. But still, some of them like Kenaz appears twice. So does Vunyo. But basically, what we're going to do then <clears throat> is we're going to find power. We'll go ahead and write it up here again. And we have to figure out just exactly where that is and what the numerical value of it is and what the rune's going to be. So instead of the number, we're going to find the rune. And so we know that power is a, is a, is a P. The P power begins with P. So we're going to go and we're going to find uh, uh, it's going to be per throw in that same position. And I'll show you. You see where the P is in the seven column? Go down to the rune one and you'll see Vunyo. Or not, Vu, not Vunyo, but Perthro. Let's see if I can do this right, right there. All right. So, and then the O is going to be Othala. And we know that's a six. So we go to the six column and you see Othala there. You see where the O is? Go down to the same space in the rune table, and you're going to see Othala. So Othala is going to be the next one. W is in the five columns, so we're going to find the W, which is at the bottom, or we're going to see Vunyo. Looks like the letter P. We're going to find E, which is again in the five, only up higher. That's going to be Ewas. You see that? And then the last one's going to be Rado. There we have it right there. You see the R right there? It looks like an R. That's Rado in the ninth column. So instead of seven, six, five, five, nine, we have Perthro, Othala, Vunyo, Ewas, and Rado as our runes. Now, from there, we're simply just going to go find them, okay? And I'm going to use my red pen again. We're going to draw a little circle around Perthro. Go down to Othala. Back up to Vunyo. 
down to Ewas. And up and terminate at Rado. And there you have it there. <clears throat> Let me draw that out here for you so you can see what it looks like without the benefit of the table. There's your sigil. Probably should have uh, angled that down a little bit more, but uh, there's your sigil done in, done that way. Now, planetary square-wise, let me tell you a little bit about the planetary squares and seals again. The, um, the idea behind the planetary squares, squares uh, invoke, seals stop. But we aren't going to use the um, we aren't going to use the square, even though we're making a sigil, which could theoretically be thought of as a seal. It is not. It's not. It's not part of the intention of what we're doing. Um, when you use planetary seals and squares, they have they have additional power to them. Uh, consider it cosmic ray energy, whatever you want to call it. They have additional power to them. So if you're going to simply draw them in a ritual, you're doing it for a specific purpose. If I were to use the sun, both the uh, uh, square and the seal, for example, I might use the seal first to stop if someone is, is in other words, if I was doing a ritual where I was trying to... Uh, increase my personal power in other words level the playing field maybe i'm talking to somebody who's just it's just too hostile too aggressive too too much right and so i kind of go oh my goodness right well i don't want to do that i want to be able to stand in my own power right and and engage with this person in a way that that preserves my own sovereignty and at the same time sort of you know recognizes that hey that's all a bunch of bluster and i don't need to respond to that right but maybe i've been responding to it and so I don't want to do that anymore. So I want to push down that individual's aggressive, you know, communication style maybe a little bit. I'm going to do that maybe with the sun seal. So I might set that down first if I have a picture of it or I've drawn it out. Typically, I'm going to draw it out because it's in the drawing of it that you have that you're doing your invocation, basically, you're invoking your intention into that, that, that planetary seal to stop that, that level of discourse, perhaps, because the idea, see, you're, again, you're wanting to do this. This person's got too much power, you're wanting to bring it, and you're wanting to level the playing field. You're not wanting to do this, okay? You aren't wanting to do that. You're simply wanting to balance the playing field, and you would do that then by drawing out or writing out the uh, the table, the magic square. Now, if we want to do it, though, to just, cr just use the square itself, just to create our own sigil, please don't think that it is then on the same level as the planetary seal, because it isn't. You know, unless you're creating your own seal to stop something, then you can do that. Uh, but you simply have to state that as your intention. Otherwise, that's not you. You're not. Don't don't assume that that's going to be the outcome because it's, it's not necessarily going to do that. Well, because what we're going to do today with these particular squares is to is to simply create our own stand in our own power sigil. So, invoking that sort of action, we're not going to be sealing off anything. So, if we look then uh, and we take our our other table that we have here which corresponds each letter to its, its numero, nu, numerolo, numerological value within the alphabet, we're not going to reduce the numbers down to a single digit. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use the 26 letters of the alphabet. And so again, you're going to have to make sure that the planetary square you're using has enough, uh, enough, it goes to 26, just in case, you know, there's a Z in there or something. Uh, but, but in any event, um, with the sun and, the, and Mercury, we've got plenty to choose from. Um, invoking just simple power, just interpersonal power, to stand in one's own power, to level that playing field. Uh, you can do that both with the sun and Mercury. If you do it with the sun, you're talking numbers 16, 15, 23, 5, and 11. 
Is it 11? Let me double check here. Where is R? Maybe, maybe make sure that R is 11. No, R is 18. I'm sorry. I did this and I thought better of it. So I'm going to have to actually draw this out again. Uh, I, I went and I and I and I was thinking it was K. It's not. I looked at the wrong side here, and uh, uh, in fact, it's not 11. It's 18. So I need to revamp this a little bit. So what I'm going to do here. Uh, and I did the same thing on the mercury one. I'm going to have to refi I'm going to fix it too. So we're going to have different seals here or sigils rather for for what we did. But if we're going to do this this way, again, we're looking at 16, 15, 23, 5 and 18. Let me find 18 on this one really quickly. Um, let me use this to be sure here where the 18 is. Oh, I see it. Okay. So starting with the sun, though, is where we can actually see what we're doing. We start out with 16. We go over to the 15, which is straight over, then to 23, then to 5, and then to 18, where we terminate. So that's actually what the sigil is going to look like. But what you would do see is you would, within your ritual, you would you would write out your 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 sun square basically your planetary square for the sun. You would write that out, and again, you can use. Uh, I mean, if you want to make it easier on yourself, you can use index cards that are. You can go find these that have graphing, that they're basically graph paper size index cards, um, or index card size graph paper, however you want to say it. And you can um, use it. You, you're going to know which one you're going to use. And so go ahead and draw out your uh, boundary. And, and then just start, have your example right there. And then just start as you're, as you're you know, uh, focusing on your intention here of interpersonal power, you would then draw out your magic square. And then from there, uh, the planetary square for the sun or Mercury or whatever you're going to use, I, I would recommend one of those two. <clears throat> and then you're going to draw your, your sigil out. And ultimately, I'll cover the one I screwed up on. There's your sigil. Using the planetary square of the sun. Now, if we were to do the same with Mercury, and then where did I say that 18 was? I've got to look again. There it is. So again, we would start out with 16, go up to 15, down to 23, over to 5, Well, this is actually easier. I don't have to actually, I can just draw this one a little bit further. There we go. Because 18 was just down from the 11. So that's what I meant about it being kind of side by side. So here you have your sigil drawn within the, the Mercury square. And then up there, I just extended it a little bit. And there's your, there's your sigil. So there's that one with the sun, that one with Mercury, a little bit different, aren't they? There's your runic one. And then the one done with the magic, the magic circle. And then the one done with the simple nine point square. Now, if, and we'll give you a little introduction into binder and creation if you have not seen that, 
Let's go ahead and take some runes out of the Elder Futhark. We did power, so we did five. Let's go ahead and do five this time. And what you do is you set your intention. I want to have more balanced personal power with people. Thera's ass is the first one that you that I drew. Rado. Now, I'm not going to put these in any particular order, but instead of using the corresponding runes for each letter, see, you could do it this way. We're, we, power has five letters, and so we're going to draw out five runes. Urus. And you could use this table to draw your sigil out with, but, you know, it's a bind rune, so why would you? But if you wanted to make a different, there's Isa. If you wanted to make a different type of a of a of a sigil, not using just deriving it from the runic energies themselves, but not have it reflect a rune, any of them as, as you would in a bind rune, and then we have Tiwas, uh, then then you could certainly do that. You're still you're still getting you know runic energies involved in the whole thing. So let's go ahead and we'll create this uh, bind rune here. Let's go ahead and start with Isa, <clears throat> excuse me, as the back, backbone for it. And then from there, we can, we can add uh, Tiwas to that. So here we have Isa and then Tiwas, which makes Tiwas. I'll draw those up here, what we're using here, so that you know. Uh, let's see. Now, from there, we can add... There is as you can see there. From that point, we can extend it out to Rado. What do we have left? We have Urus. Now we can do Urus in a in a variety of ways here. We can either bring it down from the top here, or we could bring it down here. And I think I want to do it there. And there's Urus. And there's your bind room for power. Let's talk about it <clears throat> so that we know what it is that uh, the runes selected for us. <clears throat> we have Isa, alignment and source presence, our greatest, most fundamental power of all. Urus, <clears throat> the uh, primal forming essence, spirit informing, basically. Again, Highest power of all. There is as we're going to break through obstacles. Standing in our own power. Think Thor's hammer. There is as is Thor's rune. Rado is about integration and harmony with others, reciprocity, going forward together and shared purpose. Again, leveling the playing field. And then Tiwa is the spiritual warrior within. Remembering that that's who we are, that we derive our true power from spirit and not from the ego. So you can see when you set your intention, all kinds of wonderful things can happen and typically do with the bind runes I do. And uh, I, I never, ever do it this other way because I don't need to, really. I mean, I can. It depends on what, I'm, what, what kind of a sigil I want to create. If I want to create a bind rune, I'm going to do it this way. But I can still use runes to create a sigil for power. But, you know, either one is going to work, right? So I guess that's it. Um, again, you know, sigil work can be done in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, typically, it involves some kind of numerology table that you're using, so you've got to convert. You know, again, you may want to get rid of your vowels. You may want and you definitely want to get rid of duplicate uh, letters, Um you can use a single a single word or a phrase. Um, if you wanted to use your name, you would use your first, middle, and last name. You could and it, and 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 you could decide. Then you have to decide. Well, do I want to use my birth name or do I want to use my my married name if I'm married? Again, 
depending on how long <laughs> you had your single name versus your married name. I've been married for next May will be 41 years. So I would likely use my married name because I, it just, but again, it just depends on where you resonate. So all of that really goes into the whole construct of it all. And so you want to think all this out before you, you do your ritual, before you get there and you've cast your circle you, or you've invoked sacred space, however it is that you, you begin such a, a working. But you want to have it all planned out. You want to have all of your stuff ready. And ideally, again, create whatever it is you know ha have your have your numerology table sure handy but if but but you would want to create your square or your circle unless you find doing this one just too frustrating and then get that ahead ready ahead of time uh, again ideally get your magic square boxes ready uh whichever one you're going to use if, you're, if you decide to go planetary with this I suppose I could get this turned right. But the idea is that you're going to want to uh, enter the numbers in the exact boxes. And so if that's just too much, then go ahead, print one out and just use that. The, the idea is to not create a situation that's that's so that, that then it just involves too much struggle because that's going to break your focus. So again, it does not matter if you don't Unless your goal is to simply create a, 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 a planetary square to work with. I mean, if that's actually what you're there to do, then definitely you're going to have to figure out a way to do that. Uh, again, the graph paper uh, index cards can work. They're very small, though. So unless you've got a lot of light that you're working at working with, then maybe it might be better to create one on in a spreadsheet that's just got a little bit bigger and, and you could use that, print them out, you know, have like a master template. And then each time you can just print them out and, you know, cut them out into a little square and then just use that in your ritual. Uh, because sometimes you really do need to take that time within the ritual and construct your magic square or circle. That is actually part of the process. So. But in any event, you know, if it's going to break your focus, then don't do it. Do whatever. In other words, plan it out in a way that maximizes your efforts, not one where you're going, oh, God, I'm struggling with this and you're breaking focus and I'm worried and I can't, I, you know, you don't need that. That's that's going to break the focus of the whole intention. So so again, you know, you can you can do it the con conventional, traditional way or you don't have to. You really don't. It's really all about your intention and, and, and how you're casting it. It really doesn't matter how you do it. You could do it with absolutely none of this stuff and just sit quietly, uh, bring yourself into a still point, focus your intention and cast that intention into the, into the universe. And that's enough, really. But this stuff is just fun. So I don't know. It's just building energy. So in any event, thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I think I'm going to do... Probably the next one on, on actual bind runes and getting into the different, uh, what the different interpretations of the runes are, different ways that you can, you can do these either intentionally by knowing the, the definitions and interpretations and selecting the runes or allowing the runes to select themselves the way I do. So in any event, we'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.